Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel. And today I have a limited edition book box that was put out by Down the Rabbit Hole. Now if you're not familiar, Down the Rabbit Hole does darker reads, so thrillers, even some horror. But as you read along, there are sticky notes on certain pages that tell you to open a corresponding gift. So it really brings the book to life. Sometimes a little bit of a spooky life. And they do limited edition boxes as well. Now they have sent me quite a few monthly boxes. I have quite a backlog. I'm trying to get through to th through those by the end of the year, but I did want to go ahead and share this June limited edition that they came out with. It was so popular. They actually restocked it and then it sold out once again. So I don't believe it's available on the website, but I do have a code for you if you're interested in subscribing to the monthly box, or I think it might actually even work in the shop as well. It's simply Noel 15. That should save you 15%. If for some reason that code has expired, just let me know in the comments and I will reach out to them for sure. But the limited edition box that I have to share with you today is featuring the novel The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides and they actually did a very special box for it. I think it's really cool. It's got some extra quotes. It got fear and death on this very pretty pink box which is kind of what this novel seems to be all about. It's this beautiful um, poetic language, these gorgeous girls, and yet these very, very dark topics. So if this is it, it, in any way a triggering topic for you, just you can tell by the name of the novel itself, please by all means feel free to not watch this video. But if you are like me and you just know that this has kind of become a really popular novel, I believe that Jeffrey Eugenides actually won the Pulitzer Prize, not for this book, but another one. Uh, I think this was his, actually his debut novel and he won several awards for this as well. And of course it was turned into a movie uh, back in the day by Sofia Coppola and it featured uh, Kirsten Dunst and Josh Hartnett. I actually didn't see the movie when it came out because I wanted to read the book first and I never actually got around to reading the book until now. And that's the great thing about these boxes. They do really inspire you to read because you just get so excited about getting to that next page that has a sticky note. Now this limited edition box, again, it came out in June originally, I believe, was $99.99 plus shipping and it included a snack and a drink, which is always a nice little bonus that Down the Rabbit Hole often includes, as well as 10 gifts. I thought that was so, so cool. When they first came out with it, they had two different editions. They had this paperback, which is the one that I actually wound up using for my reading, but you also could have chosen this tiny little hardback, which is very pretty, um, but I did hold on to this because I did some photos for the promos, but I did hold on to this other option. I think the second time they came out with it, it probably was only with this particular uh, 25th anniversary edition. So let's go ahead and uh, get into it. I'll show you what the uh, snack and the drink were. So we got some Dark Fate Tea, pairing the soft floor notes of rose and innocence with the bitter minty tang of loss. This tea is anchored with the darkness of black tea and spices, giving a full-bodied tea that represents the bitter sweetness of life's journey. So wow, that's pretty dark, right? But totally goes with the idea and it comes in this pretty pink package. So again, that juxtaposition. It's really like the boys that narrate the book, you guys, they have one, it's a little bit of an uncomfortable language to read because it's it's in the 70s, so there's some stuff that is just not PC at all. But when they are talking about the Lisbon girls, the five sisters, it just it gets a little creepy just because it's so voyeuristic and it is so like they're so obsessive about it. But that's why I think it's such an effective novel because it really like makes you feel that weird like kind of cringiness to it. And it's, it's really effective as well in terms of talking about sort of like the American dream and like the postmodern failure failings of the American dream and just kind of what was going on socially during that time. So it is an interesting book. It's, it's one that I was glad to have the opportunity to read. So we got that tea. We also got this beautiful bookmark, which I just kind of love. It's like one of the Lisbon girls, probably Lux, probably the one that was played by Kirsten Dunst, just pink, of course. They did also include a card, which I thought was really nice about if you are someone who is in crisis or you know someone who is in crisis, it gave you some hotlines and some information to seek help. Um, we also get a playlist with every box, which I think is really cool. So there's our QR code for that. And of course we get our nice little brochure that talks about this uh, limited edition and it gives us a great quote from it. It didn't matter in the end how old they had been or that they were girls, but only that we had loved them and that they hadn't heard us calling, still do not hear us, up here in the treehouse with our thinning hair and soft bellies, calling them out of those rooms where they went to be alone for all time, alone in suicide, which is deeper than death. 
and where we will never find the pieces to put them back together. So it's these guys like in middle age that are still obsessed with these girls and just how um, you have to wonder how much of it they've just sort of changed in their own memories, right? So yes, he uh, was born in Detroit, and this takes place in Gross Point, which is just outside of Detroit. I believe um, he attended Brown and Stanford, and then let's see, uh, it was published in 1993, and he did indeed receive the Pulitzer Prize for Middlesex, but I won't, I won't keep reading to you about Jeffrey Eugenides, and the, I think a lot of people made a lot of comments about it being like a Greek tragedy and the narrators being like a Greek chorus, and I think it just came from the fact that his last name is Eugenides. Um, so, and I think he said as much in uh, other other uh, interviews. And then we also got these apricot jam petites from Jocelyn and Company. Nice little cookies to go with their tea. So very, very sweet. Seems like something they might have had at the, the little party that the girls had. So what I do with these book boxes is I go ahead and I read the passage. I'm going to have to read it a pretty quick clip because again, there are 10 gifts and then I try to open it up and show you what those gifts are. So the first one is... Everyone had a theory as to why she tried to kill herself, Cecilia, the youngest one. Mrs. Buell said the parents were to blame. That girl didn't want to die, she told us. She just wanted out of that house. Mrs. Shear added she wanted out of that decorating scheme. On the day Cecilia returned from the hospital, those two women brought over a bunt cake in sympathy, but Mrs. Lisbon refused to acknowledge any calamity. We found Mrs. Buell much aged and hugely fat. So this is the guys going later on and talking and interviewing people to try to piece together the Lisbon girls still sleeping in a separate bedroom from her husband, the Christian scientist. Propped up in bed, she still wore pearled cat's eye sunglasses during the daytime and still rattled ice cubes in the tall glass she claimed contained only water. But there was a new odor of afternoon indolence to her, a soap opera smell. So that's what the page looks like with the sticky note. And then let me go ahead and get into the box. I should have probably pulled all of the gifts out first, but we'll do what we can. You guys, look how cool this box is. It's got quotes and stuff all inside of it. It's got the names of all the girls. I thought they did a really nice job of this. So here is gift one. So they're all labeled like this. And those were just some of the nosy neighbors. Of course, in a town like this, everyone has their own opinion. We got this very pretty pink uh, sunglasses case. I actually thought that was kind of cool. So they talked about her cat eye glasses. These are not cat eye, but this is actually a really nice case, even though it's very pink. We did get a nice cleaning cloth. I thought that was cool. And we got some aviator sunglasses, which I probably won't wear, but I like that they give us sometimes items that are a little bit more usable than like directly verbatim from the page. They have these like teal um, arms. I thought that was kind of cool. So we'll throw that one over to the side because we still have nine more gifts to go. The next one was just a few pages later. Um, so once Cecilia fails the first time around and comes home after the hospital, her therapist suggests they let the girls be more social. That was why two weeks after Cecilia returned home, Mr. Lisbon persuaded his wife to allow the girls to throw the first and only party of their short lives. We all received invitations made by hand from construction paper with balloons containing our names and magic marker. Our amazement at being formally invited to a house we had only visited in our bathroom fantasies was so great that we had to compare one another's invitations before we believed it. It was thrilling to know that the Lisbon girls knew our names, that their delicate vocal cords had pronounced their syllables, and that they meant something in their lives. So we got a little uh, envelope, of course, and it is an invitation to the party. So I thought this was cute. This is like a gift that I'm not going to use, but it definitely brought it to life. So Bobby Preston, and it's even got some little sparklies on it. And it says June 12th, 1971. So very like girly writing. I thought that was kind of a cute touch that they did that. I feel like the girls though, who are age 13 to 17 probably would have did a slightly nicer job of that, but maybe Cecilia did that one. So I thought that was a cool one, but again, not like the most useful gift. For gift three. We didn't understand why Cecilia had killed herself the first time, and we understood even less when she did it twice. Her diary, which the police inspected as part of the customary investigation, didn't conform the supposition of unrequited love. Dominic Palazzolo was mentioned only once in that tiny rice paper journal illuminated with colored magic markers to look like a book of horrors or a medieval Bible. Miniature designs crowded the pages, bubblegum angels swooped from top margins or scraped their wings between teeming paragraphs. Maidens with golden hair dripped sea blue tea tears into the book's spine. So I thought this was actually really cool. So this is actually something that I received in another box, I believe in a Bombay and Cedar box. Let me go ahead and move these boxes out of here. Yeah, I should have unpacked this ahead of time. 
but I will show it to you. So it came in a little mailer bag. Sometimes they come like that. And it is actually this very cool pop-up journal from Christian Lacroix. Paris. So it's very neat, you guys. So it's for Rome, Mumbai, Rio de Janeiro, Mexico City, Los Angeles. And you can see it's these beautiful colored pages. And it does actually have pop-up pages as well as blank pages that kind of have that illuminated feel like an old illuminated book. So her journal, the idea was that it had so much detail to it. But that is a really cool item. Um, I've taken some pictures of it for another box over on Instagram. I'll probably do some of this one eventually. But that is a cool item and a cool interpretation, I thought. So it says, for the next one, gift four, Cecilia's bedroom, when we finally obtained a description from Lucy Brock, confirmed this assessment of her character. In addition to a Zodiac mobile, Lucy found a collection of potent amethysts as well as a pack of tarot cards under Cecilia's pillow that still smelled of her incense and her hair. So that is gift four, came in this little mailer bag. And of course, you could probably guess I was like, maybe we'll get an amethyst. Of course, we got some tarot cards. So pretty classic tarot cards. I don't usually use tarot cards. I think of them more as like a party game, like a Ouija board. But these ones are actually very beautiful. So Cecilia is considered, you know, the weird one because she's the one that went first. And then I feel like the others wound up just being so trapped in their house. But these are like really gorgeous tarot cards. And I thought it was kind of fun to be opening this box around Halloween time when we might be uh, you know, playing some of those games or using that as like kind of fun decor to have out you know so let's move on to gift number five so let's see it explained a lot we're talking about trip fontaine who is the main guy that uh finally gets lux to uh give him some attention it explained a lot it explained why he never took off the puka shell necklace she'd given him it explained the travel poster over his bed showing a man soaring over acapulco bay and a kite pulled by a speedboat I explained why he changed his manner of dress the year before. So Trip Fontaine went with his dad on vacation and his dad kind of ditched him. Here's gift number five. But it was his first sexual experience with this woman and she gave him a puka shell necklace. So Trip Fontaine is like the man and that is why all the guys sort of, you know, they all want to be him. And instead of a puka shell necklace, which I was thinking we we're gonna get a puka shell necklace, which I would have been totally okay with, we actually got this uh, turquoise beaded necklace and it does have a toggle closure actually it's a it's a regular closure kind of a bigger one so they have this pretty cowrie shell with some gold edging on it so you could totally wear it like this with the closure as the pendant but you can actually take the pendant off as well and wear it just by itself without the cowrie shell or you could put the cowrie shell onto the actual necklace which I thought was really cool so of course I just dropped it on the ground so I think that's a sign for us to move on to the next one but I thought that was actually a nice jewelry piece not like the highest quality but very versatile and a good again usable interpretation of what was in the book so let's see um so this is when he goes over trip fontaine goes over to watch the tube with the girls and hopefully get some more attention but they're very much chaperoned and so he basically leaves the house with feeling very unrequited feeling like he's never going to get anywhere with uh with lux who is the second oldest i think she's only 14. he laid his head back on the headrest and opened his mouth to ease the constriction in his chest when suddenly the air inside the car churned he felt himself grasped by his long lapels pulled forward and pushed back as a creature with a hundred mouths started sucking the marrow from his bones she said nothing as she came on like a starved animal and he wouldn't have known who it was if it hadn't been for the taste of her watermelon gum which after a the first First few toward kisses he found himself chewing which um, that passage gets a little racy so I am not gonna keep going but that is a really good passage in terms of talking about the language in there and of course we got some bubble gum with good old school hubba bubba I thought that was cool but also in here we got this neat um, enamel pin and there's like a whole world of people making enamel pins to go along with books this one is uh, <laughs> of course her panties because she likes to write guys names on her panties which then wash off but originally it was Kevin and now she writes Tripp's name on her panties which I think is pretty funny let's see so that was gift number six that means we are on to gift number seven so uh, then no one spoke. Everyone's attention returned to the bottle Trip Fontaine held in his hand. Reflections from the disco ball glittered on the bottle's surface illuminating the inflamed fruit on the label. Peach snops 
Trip Fontaine explained years later in the desert, drying out from that and everything else. Babes love it. Uh, so they get to go to the homecoming dance. Trip wants to go with Lux, but the deal is he has to find dates for the other three girls, which he does. So they get to go and uh, we get this gift, which is in a nice gold box with a nice gold ribbon. I'm trying to remember all the gifts so that I can find the right boxes for you quicker. This was a great gift. I thought this was really fun. So it's a drink with a kiss and it is a nine ounce peach schnapps candle. So that's a pretty hefty sized candle. I thought that was cool. And it smells good and it's pink with some glitter. I don't know if you guys can see the glitter, but I thought that was a cool item and perfect for um, them getting the girls a little bit tipsy, a little bit loose at the homecoming dance. Then for gift eight, let's see what we've got. We only learned years later what had happened to Lux and Trip Fontaine. Even then, Trip told us with extreme reluctance, insisting as the 12 steps mandated that he was a changed man. After their dance as homecoming king and queen, Trip had ushered Lux through the knot of applauding subjects to the very door where Therese and Kevin Head had gone to get some air. We were hot from dancing, he said. Lux was still wearing the Miss America tiara Mr. Durrett had placed on her head. They both bore royal ribbons across their chests. What do we do now? Lux had asked. Whatever we want. I mean, as king and queen, do we have to do something? This is it. We danced, we got ribbons. It only lasts for tonight. I thought it was for all year long. Well, it is, but we don't do anything. So, of course, they were crowned homecoming king and queen. So we have box number eight. And I thought this was kind of cool. We got the corsages. So they all got corsages and they got white because they figured it would go with the girls dresses, which of course were very matronly because they were homemade. In addition to that, we also got a prom sash that says prom queen. I won't pull that out, but nice uh, pink sash. And we got a tiara. So you can see that some of these of the 10 gifts actually have several. I don't know what I would do with the fun little corsage. It might just be like a cute little like decoration for something, but we actually got a tiara, which I'm gonna put on you guys, cause why not, right? So it has the little combs. It's just a cheap little tiara, but I thought that was kind of fun and maybe it can go with my uh, Halloween costume, right? We have got two more gifts to go for page, or not page, but page 180, gift number nine. It says, let's see, the truth was this. We were beginning to forget the Lisbon girls and we could remember nothing else. The colors of their eyes were fading. This is of course after they're all gone. The location of moles, dimples, centipede scars. It had been so long since the Lisbon girls had smiled. We could no longer picture their crowded teeth. They're just memories now, Chase Buell said sadly. Time to write them off. But even as he uttered these words, he rebelled against them, as we all did. And rather than consign the girls to oblivion, we gathered their possessions once more, everything we'd gotten hold of during our strange curatorship. Cecilia's high tops, Teresa's microscope, a jewelry box in which a strand of Mary's dishwater blonde hair lay bedded on the cotton, the photocopy of Cecilia's laminated picture of the Virgin, and one of Lux's tube tops. So you can see these guys are totally obsessed and it is kinda creepy, but here they are with their catalog. They even like enter their, you know, examples. Like it's almost like evidence, like they're piecing together a case. So of course, we got the jewelry box. Luckily, it didn't have a piece of, of Mary's dishwater blonde hair. It's very bubblegum pink. It kind of goes with what her jewelry box would probably look like. This is an example of a gift. It's kind of like felted that I probably won't use, but I can definitely re-gift it to a little girl. But it is a pretty big jewelry case. You know, it's got the, like the top and it's got a nice snap closure. So that was kind of cute. I think I would have liked a little bit of a looser interpretation of it, maybe a, a travel jewelry case that I would have used myself a little bit more. And then we do have one final gift. So when the uh, other four girls decide to commit suicide, one of them does not complete suicide at first. She eventually does. And when she does, she had on so much makeup that the paramedics had the odd feeling she had already been prepared for viewing by an undertaker. And this impression lasted until they saw that her lipstick and eyeshadow were smudged. She had clawed herself a little at the end. She was dressed in a black dress and veil, which reminded some people of Jackie Kennedy's widow weeds. And it was true. The, the final procession out the front door with the two paramedics like uniformed pallbearers and the sound of post-holiday firecrackers going off on the block over did call to mind the solemnity of a national figure being laid to rest creepy right so our last gift is gift number 10 this is also not the most useful gift in the world however the fact that i am opening it around halloween means i might be able to use it so at first i was like did they give us like a black dress 
They did not give us a black dress, they gave us a black veil. So we've got this comb, so you can actually wear this black veil. So I thought this could be a really cool, like spooky Halloween costume. It's a pretty long one with this lace edging at the bottom. So it, once I steam it, it'll probably be kind of nice. So not all useful gifts, but I thought the tiara, the candle, uh, the book, the tarot cards, those were all pretty fun and it does really bring the book to life. You guys let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you again to Down the Rabbit Hole for letting me read this limited edition box and I'll see you all very very soon in my next unboxing.